Hi guys, it's Luzikil. In today's video, we will go through how to build an underground mine like this. Like all my previous tutorials, I will show you what to include in the skeletal key points of the build and then you can flesh out the remaining build with your own creativity and decide what you want to put in it. When we are talking about underground mines, we'll probably need a ladder. There is actually a pretty cool ladder in the game. I'm currently at Mount Tianheng area. This is the perfect ladder for an underground mine. However, the sad truth is that there's nothing like this in a Serenity port so we'll just have to make do with this. That's right, this is the closest ladder that I could find to the one that I liked and it's the Ballad Spinning Wind Wheel. You can get it from Tubby at Trust Rank 10. We are going to create the underground mine's entrance with the ladder. This diamond is the boundary area for the windmill. Put down a palace step. Try to gauge it so that I can stick it to the face of the diamond. Next, make sure it is follow last rotation and place down a slumbering stratus. The idea is that I want to cover the windmill while still leaving the ladder exposed. You can zoom in to see the boundary area clearer. There's still a bit of space so I can inch in. Looks good. So I'm going to do this on all four sides. After placing boulders on all four corners of the windmill, you'll find that there's a gap at the back. So I've used a verdant pig boulder just to cover it. Now to make the opening above the ladder. I'm going to click on settings, snap to grid, so that there's all these lines here to help me. Next, I will build a tunnel in front of the ladder. However, I need to determine the width of the tunnel. And for that, I have the large grip vine. I put it in front of the ladder and I make sure it is within the grid. So from now on, all my tunnels will be the width of large grape vines. Now I'm going to create the walls of the tunnel by using two parallel steps. First I rotate so that it is parallel to the large grape vine because it is my guide. Once I'm confident, make sure it is follow last rotation and place the second parallel step. Now I want to put down slumbering stratus to create a whole effect on top of the ladder. However, as you can see, it is red in colour. This is because it clashes with the windmill. The solution would be to pull it away, as well as this pallet step, then stack it on top. I like to use this right angle gap kind of thing. Okay, after I've stacked it on top, then I move it using the pallet step below. And luckily for me, the large grapevine is there as a guide. So this is the hole. I'm going to repeat the same thing on this side. I've done the other side so the tunnel is complete and so is the hole at the top. What you can do is you can click on save, close the editor, then use any characters to climb down the ladder. This will show you whether you have made the hole too big or too small. Let's talk about mine layout. I've created a square border for the sake of this tutorial and there are two things to take note of when creating your mine. The very first thing is about using large grapevine as your placeholder for measuring the width of your tunnels. If you don't use it, you may end up with something like this where it looks like these two borders are actually quite wide but because of their boundary, there are actually empty areas around the border that is still considered their boundary. Therefore, this is actually quite narrow. But by using large grapevine, you're making sure that the width of all your tunnels are uniform. The second point is to always remember that you have to cover your mine up. I want to use a slumbering stratus and start covering the mine up. So far so good. But what about here? I can put it here, that's for sure. But the middle part, I will need a palace step in between to serve as a pillar so that I can put a slumbering stratus on top. Therefore, whenever you're creating your tunnels inside your mine, you need to remember that at the end of the day, you are going to cover it up. So you must make sure that there is no pocket of space that is too wide and the slumbering stratus is unable to cover it. This is the layout that I will settle on for this tutorial. And this is what it looks like covered. 
The next step would be to determine what goes into your underground mine. What better way is there to gain inspiration than to visit the game's mine itself? I'm currently at Mingyun Village. This is the mine's opening. But before we head in, I just want to take a look at something over here. This could be a simple cargo cart in our Serenity pod. Unfortunately, we do not have a ore cart that's tipped over. We also don't have this huge timber supports, but we just have some wooden fences perhaps. There's tracks in the mine. Ore chunks, collar piece. Okay, so to the left, there's some baskets of ores. Uh, we don't have baskets in a serenity pot, however, we do have barrels. So maybe a sturdy wooden barrel or a soy carrying wooden barrel. There's a light source over here. Uh, we could use maybe a pine street light or any of those stone lamps. We are back in our mine and the first thing that I want to construct is a dead end or a collapse. Before I do so, I would like to bring to your attention about the rocks that we have. We have two different kinds of colours. Uh, one is a more brownish and one is a more greyish. Personally, I prefer the brownish one because it blends better with the boulder. The greyish one stands out a bit too much. I'm gonna place this one over here. I also want to have some fences to show that, hey, the miners created some fences to block us off so that we don't go in. There's many fences that you can choose from, but my general suggestion is if you choose one, you gotta stick to it because it's the theme. I'm gonna use this simple wooden fence. Maybe another one here. I also want to put some light so that people can see. Oh. There's a collapse. Let's not go too near it. There we go. So this is an example of a dead end or a collapse. Just a little away from the collapse, I have a small workstation as well as a storage area. Some of the things here are what we saw in the game's mind. Something like a simple cargo cart, perhaps. And then we also have some barrels. The sturdy wooden barrel and a soy carrying wooden barrel. I've also added a fur forging table to make it seem like, oh, this is the place where the miners cut up all their wood bundles in order to make the fences. And uh, instead of using barrels, sometimes they can use uh, storage sacks as well. Then there's also a fur crate, maybe it's the dynamite box. And of course, we we'll want to include some light. If you would like, you can also line up the sides of your mine with fences. And over here, I also tried to recreate a look of the tunnel that is the latest one. Means that miners have just dug this up. So there is no big rock. Instead, there is many, many small ones. And there are some barrels over here. Wood bundle, storage sack. And there's no fences that's blocking here, so it will show that it's the latest one. As for the mining town above, it's really up to you what you want to put as long as you keep within the load limit. For example, I like to have fences that borders around the hole so that it shows that people won't fall in easily. You can also have a well, because each town needs a source of water as well, right? Maybe some trees, pine cabin. If you have any cracks on the top and you want it to be covered, just place a house over it. This last step is not crucial to the build, but I just prefer to have it, and that's stairs. So you can see the bottom level is the underground mine and the top level is the mining town, right? So I want to have stairs to make it look as if, oh, I've climbed up and reached the town. And this is what it will look like. So this one is a Kilichu Chieftain Hall. You can get it at Trust Rank 9 from Tabi as a reward. The reason why I saved this for last is because if I put this first, anything else that might cross into its boundary area inside the mine will not be able to be placed. I will need to redo this thing. As you can see right now, it is still red in color, so I'll need to do some boulder clipping to put it in, followed by hiding this whole chunk. To begin boulder clipping, I've created a platform, and the aid of this are refined beauties. The aim is to get the Hilichu Chieftain Hall to stick and clip onto one of these. So I'm gonna place it down. As you can see, it has turned blue. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to start to move away all the borders underneath. Alright, 
this one this is the one so this is the one that the Hilichu Chieftain Hall has clicked to I can keep the rest I'm going to use some craggy canopy in order to hide this Hilichu Chieftain Hall so I put one here another one here and because it is not tall enough right I will need to put two more Over here on the bottom, I will also put a slumbering stratus because this is where the stairs will be. Now let's give it a shot. So we can see a bit of it is bulging out here. And a little bit over here as well. So let's work on it. Okay, let's try again. Not too bad at the front. And all hidden at the back, except for these four spikes. For the spikes on top, you can place maybe a tree as well as some shrubs, just to cover it. That's about it for my underground mine and mining town tutorial. If you have enjoyed it, please leave a like, subscribe for future content as well as comment down below what you would like to see next. If you prefer a cave instead of a mine, I have a cave tutorial as well. You can click on the link in the card above. Thank you so much for watching. Take care everyone.